Hello everyone and welcome to my time-lapse modeling video of the Uncharted 3 Nathan Drake belt buckle I made. Um, I'm calling this a time-lapse video because it's not really a tutorial. Uh, live modeling took me about two or three hours. Um, it's just time-lapse and I want to explain a few things and yeah. Um, it's also not a real buckle as you can see, it's just some kind of model and I will have to glue this on later. But that's just fine for me for my cosplay because usually if you do if you try to model a real buckle it just breaks straight off anyway. So yeah, let's jump right into modeling. I got my reference image from Google. I think it's the actual buckle you can buy. And yeah, I started out by making um, a sketch of the general shape around the buckle and uh, I used the spline tool. To do that. After that I mirrored my sketch to get it symmetric but um, then I noticed that the reference image wasn't even very symmetric so yeah I could work with that but it's no biggie. Um, after that I extruded the uh, sketch into a flat shape. Yeah, Next up was um, making a sketch of the horseshoe. Uh, I still used the spline Spline tool for most of the drawing. And I always just go by um, drawing one side and then trying to mirror it so because it's easier that way. And you get a really symmetric shape that way. I extruded it again. Um, for now, I just used a very uh, flat extrude, and later I got this into a uh, to round the shape of the buckle. I did the same with the details on the horseshoe. And um, when I did that, I made sure to um, make new bodies and don't make them uh, join the first body because um, later on you still wanted to um, get kind of a round shape for the buckle. So, yeah. The next thing I did was I drew a path around the buckle because for um, the little uh, semicircle pattern I actually needed that path. Um, what I did was I just drew one of the um, semi uh, semicircle shapes and then I could use the pattern tool to um, run a pattern along the path I just drew of a very uh, small detail. Yeah, and that way I didn't have to draw them all, but just one of them. And then I could later mirror the uh, parts. But that's a very fast way to get those kind of shapes without having to draw them all individually. Now I started um, to actually get the round shape of the buckle and for that um, I used a different perspective and just tried to imagine what it would have to look like to cut out um, the typical um, buckle shape. And I just had to try around for a bit but eventually found a good um, shape and then I just made the sketch on that kind of plane and um, yeah, used the revolve tool to um, actually make um, the flat model look very round like the typical bird bucket, you know. And that's basically what I did for all of the parts now. Here you can see why it was important uh, to keep the parts separated, because now I can just select every single part and body and just um, cut up the revolve uh, around every piece of body and just combine them later on. So yeah, that's what I did for every uh, Part of the buckle. I kind of could have done that before but personally I like to do that afterwards and just try to get the same angle on the uh, revolve sketch. For me it's easier but you can do that however you like.
what I did now was to measure um, the parts that get uh, more details and for that I opened up uh, Adobe Illustrator um, to get vector of the um, actual um, pattern that was on the buckle. I earlier um, used Photoshop to get a vector of the details from the actual dead buckle because um, you can use, use uh, vector files to um, import them into your 3D model and just use them to extrude some really cool details later on. And that's what I did here. Mm. Yeah, all you have to do now is to try and get um, the right shape and the right size for that. And then you can just uh, use your vector file to um, extrude into your model. And that's what I did here. Then I mirrored it again. And yeah, I did the same thing for the um, flower pattern or for the leaf pattern on here. I um, yeah, I selected the um, pattern in Photoshop and then I made a vector out of it, put it into Illustrator and um, then put it into Fusion 360. And here I'm selecting um, the vector and yeah, I'm using it to cut out my pattern into my 3D model. As you can see it leaves that cool leaf pattern into my buckle. And then I could mirror it again. And yeah. Next up I drew some more details into the horseshoe. And that was again fairly easy and I could just draw on the actual uh, plane and extrude into it and then mirror the parts again. For the tip of the horseshoe, I um, again used the spline tool to uh, draw around uh, the details and then I extruded it into two directions to get a bit more detail on the um, horseshoe tip. And yeah, I used a slight taper angle to um, get around the surface on that and yeah, then I mirrored it again. To hollow out the belt buckle, I drew again a shape on another plane, like I did earlier with the top of the belt buckle. Now I made some cleanup work because earlier I didn't really um, pay attention to how the corners look like here, and, but I could just fix that up really easily. Again, you can basically mirror all those parts. So I only had to clean up once and then mirror it over the three, uh, over the four sides. The last thing you want to do is combine all of your bodies because, as you can see on the left side, there are so many now. And to print it, you need one body, and that's what I did here. So that's the finished buckle. I really hope you enjoyed the video and please leave a comment if you have any questions, critical tell me if you would like to see more videos like this one.